absolutely no. I thought you liked wine with lunch. I wasn't refusing the wine. I thought I should refuse the favor before I'm indebted. That's not fair, Kate. You're saying if I take you to lunch, I'm suspect. Well, the chef's salad was credible. It was the wine that gave you away. Oh, 1966. It's very good. All right, you're exonerated. Let me have it. It's not that bad. There is a threatened labor action pending before the city council. I think they're gonna be sparks. The city garbage contract is up for renegotiation. They want more, the city offers less. There's nobody available to cover the story, so Kate, dear. Darling Kate, how about it, huh? You're looking at it the wrong way, Kate. You cannot take a routine story for granted. There isn't a reporter in the business that doesn't know that. Listen. I once worked with a reporter who uncovered a Pulitzer Prize story at a Cub Scout dinner. What about Watergate? Just a routine burglary. Kate? I know. They lived happily ever after, right? Are we in the same conversation? <laughs> you see that woman leaving the bar? I know her from the PTA. Her name's Ina Dellinger. Her daughter's in school with Jenny. My yarn was more exciting than that. Except the man she's with isn't Mr. Dellinger. Don't tell me you're shocked. The Mr. Dellinger's had the honor for years. Now their wives are stepping out. Oh, equality, is that the idea? Seems to be the fashion. There are women who've even managed to defy their publishers. Oh, <laughs> serious. It's over, and I want you out of my life. I'll use this. I know about the others. Your other women. You're losing me, you're getting off easy. But you come around here again, and I swear everybody's gonna know everything I know. of a schedule. I'll try negotiating. Yeah. I don't know how you do it, Mom. Do what? Find all the time. I mean, Joni's mother doesn't even work, and she is a maid to cook dinner for them. I mean, you work hard all day at the paper, and yet you still find time to take care of your home and family. Something tells me you're about to ask for something. I think you should know that Mr. Alden asked me a favor, and he bought me a bottle of wine. Mom, come on! But your family, so forget the wine. What can I do for you? It's about the schedule. Can I trade two hours of homework now for equal time at Kathy's house? For that, I'll give up two hours of TV later when I'll do my homework. Hello? It's Mr. Alden. I think it's time to panic, Josh. The garbage men are striking. Oh, boy. Oh, no. No, I'll go. Right, thanks for calling. Oh, I'm sorry, sweetheart. Something's come up. Would you mind spending a couple of hours at Kathy's house? Jen, you don't mind, do you, sweetie? I'm forgetting something. Oh, get your coat, honey. I'll drive you over there. Does this change the schedule, or is this for free? It is on the house, and tomorrow night we'll have something special for dinner. Come on. Can we go to the burger, man? Thanks, old woman. Call him. Okay. I'm with the Valley Advocate. Sergeant. Oh, hi, Kate. Well, anything you can give me? How about an arrest, a trial, and a conviction? You're that good, huh? It's nice, isn't it? Oh. It's French. It's worth somewhere in the neighborhood of two grand. Oh, you can touch it all you like. We've got over everything. Have you informed her husband? He's informed her, right? He's also in custody. Richard Dellander? Oh, come on. 
I don't believe it. Yeah, it was real tough. Witness phone police. We get here and find Richard Dellinger standing with a gun in his hand. Real tricky one. Mm. Certainly sounds very neat and simple. Some of them are. What about motive? Enough to almost earn my sympathy. Yeah, this Chatsky you're holding here. It's German. It's worth two French deaths. Dillon's used on all this until the divorce papers came and the squeeze began. How exactly was she killed? A small caliber automatic registered to Richard Dollinger. One shot. I told you. Simple. Is this where the body was found? That's right, Kate. What time did you get the call from the neighbor? Said she heard the shot around 3 o'clock, give or take a few minutes. Are you ready for this? She thought it came from a television set. Oh. Then she had second thoughts. She came over here. She didn't hear any television. She phoned us at 3.15. The first black and whites got her 10 minutes later. The shot was fired at 3 o'clock. He was still in the house at 3.25 and holding the gun. Why? Well, Kate, in the first place, to kill someone, you got to be a little off, you know. I've got to tell you something. About four hours ago, I saw Mrs. Dellinger leave the lakeside inn with another man. She might be having an affair. Have you considered that? That man could be a suspect. Well, the boys downtown feel they have a pretty tight case. I have to follow up on it. If you come up with your lover boy, you let me have him. I'll cover it. Thanks. Kate. If it's true the woman was having an affair, that gives Dellinger even more motive. I'll talk to you later. Excuse me, can I talk to you for a minute? Oh, hey, you could talk to me for hours. <laughs> oh. Hey, Herb, send us a couple rusty nails, will you? You got them. <laughs> oh, you know, I'll bet with your looks you break a lot of hearts. You forgot hubba hubba. Huh? Look, I want to ask you... Whoa, a... whoa, let's have a little cocktail with the conversation, huh? <laughs> you know, I like your style. Direct. I like your looks. Yep. I bet you're gonna turn out to be a very far-out lady. <laughs> Just put these on my room, uh, 422. Company's picking up a tab for the whole thing. Oh, by the way, I met Johnson, a hi-fi salesman. You know anything about components? Enough to get the music out of them. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, chakwa sang goo, eh? <laughs> mm. Do you mind if I ask you a personal question? Not if I can ask you one later. I was in here yesterday. I saw you at the bar. You were too shy to talk to old Eddie, huh? Hey. Don't do that. Mm. <laughs> I saw you with a friend of mine, Ina Dellinger. Yeah, so? She was murdered yesterday afternoon. Come on, come on. What are you doing? Come on, come on. I'll talk to you outside. Yeah. <laughs> Now, you want to tell me what's going on? I don't need some crazy lady spreading negative vibes all over me. What's all this about a murder? Ina was killed a few hours after she left with you. I think the police might be interested to know that you were having an affair with her. An affair? Oh, lady, you got to screw loose. I'm only in town a couple days. We're here on a hi-fi convention. I saw you together. So what? Look, this is a great spot for a convention. We were here last year. There's a lot of action around the bar. You know what I mean? Here's a perfect example. My buddy Jack picked her up yesterday. You're telling me that Ina was just a pickup? Oh, I picked her up all right. But I paid, just like all the others, 100 bucks an hour. The country's full of bored and winsome housewives, Kate. I just don't see a story in the fact that some of them take up a hobby. Oh. Prostitution is a hobby? Can be. And it has no news interest? I didn't say that. I think the tabloids would snap it up. But why would a woman like Ina Dellinger hustle? You ask your husband. He gets out on bail 3 o'clock this afternoon. All right, maybe you're right. But that's the story. 
The Valley Syndrome. Ladies of the Afternoon. And maybe even murder, Josh. You gonna cover this from the inside? Oh, is that a yes? There are a lot of strange people out there, Kate. You be careful. I will. Can I get you something? Yes, um... I'll have a ginger ale, please. Mr. Dellinger, I'm with the Valley Advocate. My name is Kate Callahan. I don't have anything to talk to you about. I might have something that will help your case. Mr. Dellinger, I've got reason to believe that your wife was soliciting. Look, my lawyers advise me not to talk to anyone. Is that clear? Mrs. Rutledge. Yes? My name is Kate Callahan. I'm with the uh, Valley Advocate. Oh, I'm sorry. We already subscribed. I'm not selling uh, subscriptions. May I come in? OK. <clears throat> have to excuse the mess. I work. Oh, that's OK. 
Is it all right to talk here confidentially? Yeah, sure. Please. Thanks. What? Sorry. Okay. I want to talk about Ina Dellinger. I'm sorry, who? Ina spent a lot of time at the Lakeside Inn. This is her picture. I don't know her. I've been to the inn, Mrs. Rutledge. I've seen you there. All right, so I've been there. That doesn't mean I know this lady. I'm trying to find a connection to the woman's murder. Well, I don't know what you want with me. <sighs> Mrs. Rutledge, I know that Ina was working the Lakeside Inn. She was a prostitute. Hi, Jan. Came home early. Didn't want to get caught in that mess on the freeway. Uh, Kate, this is my husband, Mark. How do you do? Hello. Uh, you work at the office with Jan? Uh, uh, I guess real estate's become a housewife's profession. Actually, no. I'm in uh, securities investments. I was uh, thinking about buying a house in Woodland Hills, and my schedule is so crazy, you know. Janet was nice enough to let me stop by here and talk about it. Uh, can I get you anything? Oh, no. No, thanks. Well, I need a drink. And I have to be going. Janet. See if you could find something a little bigger, okay? Two bedrooms is going to be a squeeze, and there's no pool. Nice meeting you. You too. Good night. Thanks. A house in Woodland Hills. Not bad. Uh, you find anything today? Uh, just the usual run around. You should have seen this guy, vice president. And he's telling me about the career opportunities as a computer programmer. If I'm good, I can make up to 20 grand a year. And don't worry, babe. Something's got to happen soon. Did you get that? I saw your bowling shirt in the back of your car. That easy, huh? <sighs> Look, I appreciate the way you uh, bailed me out and all, but I really don't have anything to say. Janet, we both know there's no real estate job. Look, I'm not out to do you any harm. Just tell me what you can about Ina, okay? <sighs> okay. I saw her at the lakeside now and then. I really didn't know the lady. Why are you so interested? I'm just trying to find a link between Ina's murder and her work. I thought they arrested her husband. He's out on bail. Well, it's probably their best bet. If my husband ever found out about the office, he would kill me twice. Well, at least she got rid of the vampire. I don't understand. What's the vampire? The name for the guy that blackmails us. I never met him, but he collects his money every week. A lot of frightened ladies in that place. Do you think Ina wanted out? <laughs> Why not? No husband, no threat. Maybe that was the threat. If Ina did want out, he may have tried to use force. Why, that's just 
That's just cutting off his own business. Nah, he's not looking to kill anybody. He just wants to make as much money as he can. How do you make the payments? We leave them with Herb at the bar in an envelope marked John. Other than that, just a few phone calls to keep us in line. I really find it hard to believe that women like yourself do this. Yeah, well, uh, I can't speak for the others, you know, but in my case, Mark and I were just having a real hard time. We were in debt, and things were getting worse between us, and we started to go to the lakeside a couple of times just to get out of the house. And one of those times, a gentleman offered me some money. I didn't feel good about it, but I did it. It's... It's hard to explain. All of a sudden, the bill started getting paid, and Mark and I were getting along a lot better, and one day became two, and two became three, and here I am. <laughs> and then I found the photographs on my front seat, and I've been trapped ever since. I'm real sorry for Ina, you know, but I got a lot of problems myself. See ya. Just give me five minutes. Look, I told you I have nothing to say to you. Then let me talk. Tomorrow's your preliminary hearing. I think I can help you. Well, it's five minutes with me. It might come in handy at your hearing. My father used to cook. He said that women were everyday cooks, but men, they were the real chefs. I enjoy it. It's good therapy. Listen, I'm sorry about the way I jumped at you yesterday. It was bad timing on my part. Join the club. I seem to have a knack for bad timing. Richard, what I said about Ina, I've been to the Lakeside Inn. I really do have good reason to believe that Ina was working there. And when I told you that yesterday, you looked as if you already knew. Look, most of this dirt is going to come out of the hearing. Now, I know that Ina spent a lot of money on clothes and jewelry, probably a lot more money than I gave her every week. So maybe she was hooking. As to your assumption that I knew anything about it, that's something I don't care to talk about. Well, for what it's worth, I don't think that you did kill Ina. Oh, well, my first supporter. Richard, why were you at the house? because I was furious about what Ina wanted in the way of a settlement. I was going to talk to her. But the police report said that they found you holding the gun. That's right. I came in, Ina was lying on the floor, my gun was right next to her, so I picked it up. It was reflex. Richard, where were you before you arrived at the house? Were you here? No, no, I was at the office. That's where I was served with my divorce papers. And then you went to the house? No, then I took a drive. I needed time to cool down. Where did you drive? Nowhere in particular. Malibu, through the canyon. Did you stop anywhere? I don't remember. Well, I think you should get in touch with your attorney and retrace your steps. And if I come up with a blank? Listen, innocent people don't usually have an alibi. You didn't see anybody, yes? But maybe somebody saw you. It's your best bet. Thanks for letting me talk to you. I've got a question for you now. What makes you think I'm innocent? Ina wasn't the only woman working at the Lakeside Inn. There might have been some blackmail involved, but I don't have any proof yet. If I get something, I'll, I'll turn it over to the court. This ought to turn the valley upside down. Good. 
When are you going to print it? I'm not sure, but look, Sergeant. Someone is blackmailing these ladies, and I want to expose those creeps before I print anything. Well, do you have anything to go on? Just the bartender, Herb Allen. He's the one who picks up the envelopes. What about that man that Ida Dellinger was having an affair with? Well, he's how I got into the story, of course. His name is Ed Johnson, but I'm sure he's a dead end. He was just here on a convention passing through. Anything else? I want to go to the inn. The only way they're going to grab the bait is if they can catch me in the act. And I could do with your help. <laughs> oh, so you want a John for the afternoon. Okay. You got one. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Peterson. Miss. Oh, sure. Miss. Uh, <clears throat> let's get some privacy. What are you up to? I'm hoping to expose your vampire. Kate, I thought you were the one that suggested the vampire may have killed Ina. I mean, you could be getting yourself in a lot of trouble. Janet, whoever killed Ina can do it again. But there might be no connection. Maybe. But I don't think her husband killed her. My instincts tell me the murderer's here. I got a call last night. Now they want twice as much as before. I don't know what I'm going to do. If you go along with this, how much more time can it take before you wake up and you're not even Janet Rutledge anymore? Oh, my God. Where's my husband? I've got to get out. Janet, stay. Talk to him. It's bound to catch up. What are you, nuts? I've been so busy, I haven't been able to get out on the tennis court in any way. My racket needs rewiring. Hey, it's okay. You're putting on a few pounds. Maybe your wife's a little bored with you. I oh, understand. Oh, that's not true. Lucille and I have a wonderful marriage. Sure. Look, it's nothing to me, man. We get all kinds. Tall ones, short ones, skinny ones. Look, I thought this was going to be a little more... personal. Look, what do you want? You want personal? Talk to Lucille. 
I wish you wouldn't talk about Lucille. This is the first time I've ever been disloyal to her. So I hope you'll make this special. Well, don't worry about it. For the first two years, I went through hell. Every time I get together with friends, I was sure they knew. Yeah, but they didn't. Oh, try and tell that to me every smirk. I knew what they were laughing at. I mean, think about it. What if your friends could see you now? Well, who's gonna know? Friends aren't even the half of it. You got any kids? Four. <gasps> Talk about guilt. Every time they look up at you, all that innocence, what do they know about their parents' shortcomings? I know. My youngest once brought a dead bird into the house and asked me if I could bring it back to life. Kids. They're so trusting. Every time I'd look into Babette's eyes, you know. Did you work hard today, Mommy? Oh, God, you want guilt. Oh, yeah? My boy wanted to come to the office with me today. He likes to play with the typewriter. I even lied to him. Oh, I guess we all sell out slowly. A few lies, then a couple of little indiscretions, and here we are. Jill, get over it. What Lucille doesn't know won't <laughs> Hey, man, now what's wrong? We don't have all day. No, I like, I like, I like talking to you. Oh. You're a nice lady. Why are you doing this? Yeah. I'm a nice lady. And you're a nice man. Mr. and Mrs. John Nice Smith. <laughs> 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 oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. I, uh, I'd like to run an ad. <laughs> sir, your ad. Just fill this form out for me, please. Forget it. Going home so early? Just home. Are the children home from school yet? Uh, I guess so. God's sakes, Mark, they're your children. What's eating you? You are. Isn't it enough that there's no job out there that's good enough for you and you pay more attention to that TV than you do me? But to not know where your own kids are. Don't touch me. 
Jan, I told you, I'm waiting for the right job. Please, Mark. I'm doing it for us, the kids. Me, you. You're holding out for me, Mark. I don't understand that. Hey. Your job is moving us along. It's not forever. My job. Mark, you want to know where I've been every afternoon? There's no office, and there's no real estate job. What? What are you talking about? The truth. The truth. I'm a prostitute. That's right, 100 bucks an hour. That's what Janet Rutledge is worth. <laughs> Janet, please. All right. You go ahead and walk away. You walked away from everything else. Oh, for God's sakes, Mark. I've just told you what I've done while you look at me. You. I'm sorry. You are absolutely Come on. incredible. Now, Do you have I any know. idea what could happen? I happened couldn't to get out. You have an editor, I have lieutenant. Now, what happened? Plenty. But I came through unscathed. You're not going to tell me about it? Maybe, someday. Over a $40 lunch when I'm relaxed and you're picking up the tab. I'm going back there tomorrow. You're kidding. Oh, give them a chance to throw out their hooks. If I'm right, there should be some photos in my car. Well, do you want me there? No. No way. I'm gonna let them make their move. Then I'll call you, if I need you. Well, if they make their move. Well, I'll see you. See ya. can't deal with it. You put a baby B on him, not yet. Okay, I gotta Listen, run. you're really dealing with an animal, Fair. What do you got? That's the report you wanted on the bartender at the Lakeside Inn. There are things in there that scare me. sharp today. Thanks. In the mood for a little fun? No, thanks. Maybe later. You think you could give me some elbow room, huh? I think we should talk. All right. Now get up from your stool, and we'll go to your car. We know where you live, and we know you have a daughter. Drive. There's no way you're gonna get it. Don't away. talk. Drive.
I'll give you directions. What are you trying to do? Slow down. Will you slow down? for a woman. She's supposed to be here. Her name's Kate. Yeah? You want to talk to me or not? Give me a second. I got a bar to send. Make it quick. killed that lady. She was gonna blow the whistle on us. He's got your woman. I only picked up the envelopes. On A and E, David Jansen is Dr. Richard Kimball, a man wrongly accused and running from the law on *The Fugitive*. Next.